That's the one with none in it. Right. Thank you. What, the blue one? The paper. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, people? For those of you who don't know, I'm Aidan. This is my barn conversion vlog. The uh, boundary wall is going up. I've got the brick layers in. There's, um, I wanted them to do a little bit of a detail on top of the piers, but um, obviously he's priced me for a job and I've kind of put an extra in, not really. Uh, so I'm going to cut the bricks and then uh, I've grabbed my tile saw. We'll cut that out. We'll give it a go. So these are my plinth bricks. So they're going at the top of the plinth around the bottom. But on top of the piers, what I want to do is put these as well. And then at the end, instead of just having a square on, I think it'd be quite nice to have like this angle here, but across here. So what I need to do is this saw cuts at a 45 and it, I'll just be able to do it. But these, these are not at a 45. If you look, almost it's probably about 40 degrees I reckon but if I just do 45s on the end it should look a bit nice bricklayers have gone home <clears throat> they start at like seven o'clock in the morning that is craziness and then go home at about three but I suppose it's nice going home looks like this let's say it's smashed through that like Hulk Brr. so this area is gonna be quite nice so this will be like a little garden kind of thing the doors will be there and then uh have like a little seating area there that'd be nice eh? so this all needs to come down and so I've organized I've signed up a structural engineer and a new architect they're coming around next week to check things out these are the kind of things you should be aware of foundations this has none no foundations it's just straight on the mud it's gonna come down anyway but there's stuff like this so there's a walnut tree 
stump there that's pushed in this wall that's going to need to obviously get sorted at some point and then I'll show you over there so here's over the wall that is a little oak that is a big oak this oak is closer so foundation wise off this corner that's about 11 meters to that little oak you need to calculate it as if it's going to be a mature oak which means that this corner if you've done trench fill foundations would be well over two meters which isn't necessarily practical so keep an eye out for them things if you ever buy a barn that you're going to need to underpin it's going to be very expensive if you've got trees close by i'll walk you around i'll show you the other trees as well so this is an oak that is 16 meters off of the corner of this this is a lime tree and that's going to be about nine meters off the corner of the cart lodge and this is our oak tree and that's about 16 meters off the corner of this side of the barn so you can go on a website where you can do a calculation on of what you should do your depths out in terms of trench fill foundations providing you you're not on too much of a slope i'll leave the link below if you ever need it or anything like that it means that off off the cart lodge one corner will have to be about 2.1 meters deep but by the time you come to the other side it'll only be about 1.3 so it'll be a step it up so we're gonna have to have a chat with the structure engineer to find the best solution so you can see here i've dug a little bit of a trial hole that's so the engineers can see what I've got. Um, under the metal steel frame, it's a bit deeper, but then under the block work, it's only about a foot deep. What's likely to happen is, um, I've, I've said in the plans that I was gonna remove the brick part and I haven't put a condition on whether I should be keeping anything else or anything like that. So I think we might be taking this block out as well. That'll make it easier to do the foundation. There is talk of doing piles. I can work out how much a foundation costs like trench fill and everything like that. I have no idea how much piles cost. So obviously if I end up doing that, I'll let you know and then um, that might be helpful. It's all inside, it's a bit of a hodgepodge. But yeah, potentially we're almost starting again and then it's gonna be replicated as is, but built properly. So I need to get these wooden trusses out somehow because i want to use them to put build a deck the other side of the container i'm going to knock out the top of these walls and then uh, i'll assess what to do from there the thing i don't want to do is obviously knock them over and then break the asbestos because i need to sort that out still i'm probably going to do that myself now i'm going to phone up and get a skip because um, i need to save money somewhere don't i I've been thinking about it and uh, I reckon the only way I can do it is to slowly take it apart bit by bit. And, uh, so I'm going to use this bad boy and I'll, uh, I'll time lapse it. 
Hopefully you won't see it all collapse around me and then I'll end up on the floor. So that went relatively well. Unfortunately, my battery gave up on my phone, so you didn't get the last little bit. But at least I know how to do it now. And it's that £20 little red scaffold thing. Done me well. It is pretty dangerous, but it's only me. And I don't need to worry about others in health and safety. I'm not going to sue myself, so it's all good. I've had an email from the planning department about my conditions that I'm trying to discharge. Now, this says here... Uh, da, 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 da. Further to your recent submission of application, we have now reviewed the documentation submitted. Unfortunately, your application fails to include the following particulars documentation, which is required to make the application valid. Okay, so I'm stuck in the validation department again um, with the numpties admins. Uh, one, unfortunately, we cannot measure the drawing you have provided uh, whilst this relates to all conditions listed it is particularly important to condition 11 maneuvering and parking of vehicles if we cannot measure the drawing we cannot assess the area proposed for maneuvering and parking of vehicles i'll show you what i sent them so my laptop's absolutely mashed so i have to use this keyboard i've got this mouse this mouse and this mouse still <laughs> this is what i sent them yeah because I thought I'd make it blatantly clear, like they was morons, about where everything was. Now, if you look at this, yeah, that area is massive. Why do you need to bloody measure it? It's bigger than the barn. It's probably bigger than whoever numpties like house and garden altogether. It's absolutely massive. And them saying they can't measure it, like just here, like if you used your brain, that's seven meters from there to there, and it's labeled seven meters. Seven meters is bigger from there to there. This is actually nine meters. That's probably about 15, 25 meters or something like that. So it's not exactly a tight area, is it? It's just like, like you can park a bloody lorry in there. I don't, I don't understand why they make things so bloody difficult. I hate them. I hate them. Jumped on uh, Photoshop, so here's my nice little scale now. So I'll be able to send it over to them. See, the issue before was they basically, when you send over the files, they had a limit of how big the files could actually be. So I had to break it down into little tiny chunks because it was only like... 200 kilobyte, kilobyte files that you could send so what was they expecting if they don't upgrade their bloody systems then i can't get everything through that i need to that's the reason why i've cropped it down and reduced it and took off the scale i didn't realize that they needed the bloody scale on there and the conditions it just said details it it didn't say oh we need a scale drawing they should bloody make their sales clear i i should i should run their bloody systems i don't know why why do people get paid loads of money to not do an efficient proper job of things it's ridiculous anyway it's proper raining outside so i can't take you over to see the what i've done because you can't see but my camera lens i smashed it the other day when i dropped it on the floor so everything's falling apart. This is my rig that I use to record everything. It's, it's not great. It's just one of the things. That's the reason why the light goes in and out and nothing's, the quality's not tip top. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, hit subscribe. Give us a thumbs up if you can. Um, really appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you next time. See you later.